Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Gopi Janavalabha Giri Vartahari Jaya Gopi Janavalabha Giri Vartahari Sodanandana Raja Janahanjaya Yasodanandana Raja Janahanjaya Jamuna Tira Chahadiya Jamuna Tira Havana Chahadi Havana Tira Havana Jay 
Nice and loud. Hey, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Hare. Hey, Krishna, Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Rama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Govind Jai Jai, Gopal Jai Jai, Hare Govind Jai Jai, Gopal Jai Jai, Hare Sri Sri Radha Ramana Hari, Govind Jai Jai. Govind Jai Jai Govind Jai 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 Govind Jai 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 Radha Ramana Hari Govind Jai Jai Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Oh, hey. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Krishna Krishna, Nithai Gaur. Hi, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Nithai Ghor Nithai Ghor Hari Bhar Jaya Panchatadha 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 Jaya Panchatadha Jaya Panchatadha 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 Jaya Panchatadha Jaya Gauranitai 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 Nethai Gauranitai 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 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, Canto is chapters 10, Canto uh, chapter 10, text number 7. Etam vibhutam yogam cha Mama vau yaveti tattvataha So vikau pena yogena Yujyate natra samsayaha Etam vibhutim yogam cha Mamma yo veti tattvataha So vikau pena yogena Yujyate natra samsayaha Etam, all this, vibhutim, opulence, yogam, mystic power, cha, also, mama, of mine, ya, anyone who, veti, knows, tatvataha, factually, sa, he, avikalpena, without division, yogena, in devotional service, yujite, is engaged, na, never, atra, atra, here, samsayaha, doubt. Mm. Translation. One who is factually convinced of this opulence and mystic power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service 
of this, there is no doubt. So in the previous verses, Krishna is describing his different opulences. And now he says, one who's convinced of this and my mystic power automatically engages in devotional service. Purport. The highest summit, summit means peak of spiritual perfection, is knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unless one is firmly convinced of the different opulences of the Supreme Lord, he cannot engage in devotional service. Generally, people know that God is great, but they do not know how, how they do not know in detail how great is God. Here are the details. If one factually knows God is great, then naturally he becomes a surrendered soul and engages in devotional service of the Lord. When one factually knows the opulences of the Supreme, there is no alternative but to surrender to him. This, is fact, this factual knowledge can be known from the descriptions of the Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and other similar literatures. In the administration of the universe, there are many demigods distributing throughout the planetary systems, and the chief among them are Brahma, Lord Shiva, and the four great Kumaras, and other patriarchs. There are many forefathers of the population of the universe, and all of them are born of the Supreme Lord Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the original forefather of all forefathers. These are some of the opulence of the Supreme Lord. When one is firmly convinced of them, he accepts Krishna with great faith and without any doubt, and he becomes engaged in devotional service. All this particular knowledge is required in order to increase one's interest in loving devotional service to the Lord. One should not neglect to understand fully how great Krishna is, for by knowing the greatness of Krishna, one will be able to fix, be fixed in sincere devotional service. Namaste <laughs> Vaishnavi Bhyona Mahona Maha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare So here the point is that one has to be one has to know the opulence and the greatness of the Lord and the more you know that, the more you're inclined to engage in devotional service. Prabhupada said, don't neglect this. He writes that, don't neglect knowing about the greatness of the Lord because it helps you to, uh, to become more attracted to the Lord and naturally more engaged in the Lord's service. If we're not convinced that Krishna is God and Krishna is all-powerful, and he is the supreme controller, and he has wonderful activities in the spiritual world, and he also brings those activities to the material world just to attract us to him. Then once we know all these things or hear about them sufficiently, we have to hear sufficiently. Repetition of hearing is fundamental for learning. That's why when you if you carefully go through the scriptures, you find that there's much repetition of the same points. Why? Because it takes time for people to really understand what's being said. So therefore, repetition is there. And Srila Prabhupada also made that point about his own presentation of Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, I put the entire philosophy in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the rest is just as the explanation of the same philosophy in that first canto with other stories and pastimes of the Lord included. 
But the essential philosophy is all there in the first canto. So that's important that we hear as much as possible about the Lord and develop knowledge about the Lord. Because otherwise, the alternative is that we get interested in the things in this world. That's it. We have to get interested in something. <laughs> and if we don't get interested in Krishna, we'll get interested in the material things. It's just the way it is. Because it's a natural interest of the human being tend to want to know about things, to want to hear about great people. We hear, even today, we get so excited, we hear somebody great does something, and the news is there, and devotees also get in, interested in what's going on with the so-called great people of the world, or maybe even the great people of, of time past, when years ago, when certain great people did certain great things. We become interested in hearing about it. It's just natural to hear about others' greatness, uh, hear about others' activities. It's just part of human life. But that type of hearing won't really, it will keep us entangled in the material energy. But if we hear about Krishna, his pastimes, his greatness, and all the qualities he exhibits in his activities, we become naturally attracted. Because there's something about Krishna that, that, that's nowhere else and that his pastimes are very sweet and very, very, uh, what we say, pleasing to hear. It's like today I was, I just finished my class online from five o'clock to six o'clock. So I sat down and I was thinking, well, I didn't get a chance to read Bhagavatam today, so I'll read some Bhagavatam and do a little taking of some notes. So I started to read the first, I was going to read 19 verses out of this chapter. So I read the first verse, and then I read, started to read the second verse, and I started to feel a little unenthusiastic about reading. I was thinking maybe I should do something else. But then I said, no, I'm just going to continue reading. So as I continued the reading, and after a couple more verses, I didn't want to stop because <laughs> it was so nectar, hearing Krishna's pastimes. This was with him, with the gopis. It was in the 10th uh, canto. So it was interesting. So as I kept reading and reading and reading, uh, then I had to realize that I had to go give class here, so I had to stop <laughs> or else I would still be reading. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's just the way Krishna's pastimes are. They, you start getting into them, and then all of a sudden they become more attractive. Initially, they might feel, feel a little awkward or you might think, you know, let me do something else. But after a while, you, you, let, you just f p push that mind in that direction and eventually, because it's natural, we develop attraction for Krishna. And then we start learning about Krishna from the philosophy, how he do, what he does, what he does, why he does what he does. And of course, we don't learn any, everything, but we get an idea because Prabhupada's explanation is always there with any, any of the pastimes of the Lord. So he clearly tells us why Krishna do, is doing what he's doing, what is the effect that he's doing it for, and um, what's our, what we can benefit from that, what we can learn from that, what we can benefit from that. So what this is what this verse is said. And, we should make an effort to learn more and more about the opulences of Krishna, his qualities, his pastimes, his activities, his relationships with his devotees, and the nature of those relationships, the intricacies of those interchanges with all these things endear the devotee to Krishna. And then one becomes Krishna conscious. <laughs> one becomes Krishna conscious. So that's, uh, that's what this verse is saying. Prabhupada says it, I mean, there's three paragraphs here, and he says the same thing from three different angles. But then again, at the very end, after he says it all, he sums it up in saying, <laughs> one should not neglect to fully understand the greatness of Krishna. Don't neglect. And he's saying, he's telling you why it should happen, and then he says, now do it. <laughs> Don't waste time on other things. And then he says, and because 
He says you'll be fixed in, he doesn't say you'll be fixed in devotional service. He says you'll be fixed in sincere devotional service. That word sincere, he places there to show us that by, by hearing more, knowing more about Krishna, our sincerity for devotional service becomes stronger and, you know, greater like that. that we actually look forward to serving. We enjoy serving. It becomes, what we say, an attractive feature. Because the mind gets restless, the mind wants to do things, especially this time of year. This is called the spring season. The spring season, the mind is very restless this time. Yes? <laughs> very restless. Wants to go to, you know, someplace else, right? <laughs> do something else. It's just, it's, this is the spring. Spring, each of the seasons have a certain quality. Spring means planning, newness, adventure. Summer means doing it. Fall means to get the benefit of doing it. And winter means getting ready for next spring so you can plan again. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty much how the seasons work on you. We're influenced by the season. So spring, that the energy, the mental energy, the physical energy, both increase during this time. That's why sex desire becomes stronger at this time also. But, so, but if you just dovetail it into Krishna consciousness, then it becomes a very powerful spiritual experience. So yeah, so we, we have to use this energy to hear about Krishna and become attracted to Krishna, then there's no question, well, what service do I have to do? You automatically want to serve. It becomes natural. Mm -hmm. And then there's devotees who want to hear more and more and learn more and more about Krishna. So Prabhupada says, yes, that's what these books are for. Just keep hearing about it, learn more about it. His past pastimes are so wonderful. And especially Srimad Bhagavatam, it's an ocean of unlimited philosophical teachings that are can't be found anywhere else that are not part of this world that just that just inspired our, our consciousness to want to read and hear more. The more you learn, the more you want to learn. It's just the nature of transcendental knowledge. And transcendental knowledge is never old. You can read the same thing or hear the same thing over and over again. And it has a sense of newness each time you hear it. Why? Because that's the nature of spiritual knowledge. It's not limited. It's unlimited. When you read a book in the material world or you hear something material, you can exhaust the, the meanings of it. And if you hear it enough, you get to the point where you there's nothing more you can learn from it. But in the spiritual sense, this knowledge is so this is called uh, dynamic it's not static material is static spiritual is dynamic dynamic means there's unlimited meanings in the same thing as you hear it over and over again bhakti siddhanta saraswati gave a nice example in his own life when he spoke on the Srimad bhagavatam first verse and for three months the same verse for three months he wasn't any purports it was just a verse so he just spoke on that verse for three full months. And he was covering different points each day. So this is an example how how one can go deeper and deeper into the philosophy and come up with newer and and more uh, knowledge of what is being said. As Prabhupada was was saying to one one his servant one time. He said, if you read just one page of nectar of devotion, you can be fully Krishna conscious. And then he said, no, if you just read one paragraph of nectar devotion, you can be fully Krishna conscious. And then he said, no, if you read just one sentence of nectar devotion, you can be fully Krishna conscious. Then he said, no, even if you read one word, <laughs> you can be fully Krishna conscious. So that 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 exchange with this devotee, the devotee who 
who had that exchange, he told me personally. It was Shruti Kirti Prabhu, his personal servant. He said, Prabhupada was sitting with him, and he just said, one page, Holy Krishna God. No, one paragraph, one sentence, one word. He was serious. And how much there is packed in this knowledge, because it's, it looks like w written words on the paper, but it's something much more than that. It's an ocean of transcendental knowledge that, un, that keeps revealing itself the more we apply our, our consciousness to it and it becomes more and more and more. And then when you read, you think, oh, boy, I read that before, but I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. Each time you read, it's, it's, like, the fir it's like the first time. Because, this is, because you're making advancement and every time you, uh, because of your advancement, you see more each time that you, when you read. As you go on in your Krishna consciousness, you're able to see more and more and more. Whereas a, a person who is not so advanced, he'll see so much. But then again, as we make advancement, the words reveal the more and more of the meanings that they're, that they're expressing. So this is, so this particular purport that Prabhupada say, you know, everything is there. Just learn about Krishna more and more and become absorbed in Krishna and then there's no question you'll be fully absorbed in devotional service. It's not something that we have to, you know, force ourselves to do or even think about. It becomes natural. Because it is natural when we are on the Brahma Bhuta platform or a spontaneous attraction like that. So this uh, this verse is the preliminary verse which leads to the four next verses which are called the nutshell verses. These the nutshell verses, nutshell means a nutshell is a place where a nut lives inside the shell. <laughs> and therefore the essence of the Food is not the shell, but the nut. <laughs> so inside the, sh the, the shell is the nut, is that's what you want. So there are four nutshell verses. That means the essence of Bhagavad Gita is found in these four verses that are about to come. 10, 8, 9, 10, and 11. That means the whole philosophy of Bhagavad Gita has expanded from these four verses. And in Bhagavatam, it's the second canto, ninth chapter, verses 33, 34, 35, and 36. These four verses are the nutshell verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which are the entire philosophical teachings compressed in four verses of the Srimad for Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. So, many of the scriptures they have these nutshell verses but in each of the scriptures there is called a Parivasa Sutra. Parivasa Sutra means that verse that tells you the meaning of the scripture. It's like in Nectar Devotion the Parivasa Sutra verse is um, <laughs> let's see where is it Mm, what's that verse? Mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami's verse in the introduction. Uh, he dis he defines what is pure devotional service. Ayanila Sita Sunya, Jnana Karna Manavrita, Anukulena Krishna Siladam, Bhakti Uttamam. So that verse describes the essence of the entire. Uh, nectar of devotion. Paribhasa Sutra for, for the Bhagavatam is Ete Cham Sam Kalam Pum Sam Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. Indriya Paradriti Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. That all the, mm, all the incarnations and manifestations are, are simply plenary portions or portions of the plenary portions. But the but the supreme personality of Godhead is uh, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. <laughs> like that. Um, 
one of the nutshell verses in here. Prabhupada said the most important verse in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Try to try to understand try to guess what was the most important verse in Bhagavad Gita. I know what you're gonna say, but it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess it. Who knows? It's in the fourth chapter. Janma karma chame divyam yevam yo veti tatpadaha taktwa te punam janan mar one eight taktwa punam janan taktwa deham punam janma naiti mam eighty sor juna yeah that one who knows the transcendental nature of my activities and birth does not, upon leaving this body, take birth again in this material world, but attains to my abode, O son of Kunti. Prabhupada said that verse is the most important. But of course, for us, the Sarvadhamma Pradiksha Jam, to surrender is very important also. So there are many important verses. Okay, so we want to learn more and more about Krishna, because the more you learn about Krishna, the more you you learn about yourself and you also learn what is your destination in life. <laughs> okay, so we'll stop here. Any comments or questions? Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, I wondered uh, about the Parivasa Sutra in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, or no. Tell us. <laughs> no, Lord Chaitanya said, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva K. Bhagum, Kalom Nas, Deva Nas, Deva Nas, Deva Gatta so that's in Chaitanya Charitamrita. The Lord Chaitanya took a verse from the Bhagavatam, from the first canto, Atmaramas Chamunayo, that one, and he explained it in 61 different ways. Mm -hmm. He took one verse and gave 61 different meanings. Mm. But that was the Bhagavatam verse. But the explanations in the CC. Um, I, I never heard anybody give a CC Paribasa Sutra, but it is in there. It's definitely in there. Mm -hmm. It would have to really illustrate or uh, give the point of that Lord Chaitanya is the Supreme Personality of God. It has to probably have to center around that. Uh, and there are verses like that. Uh, well, what makes a verse a Parivasa Sutra? It, uh, so it, it's it defines uh, the, in the essence of the entire scripture. Hmm. This is Jiva Goswami's uh, Understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah, Golokera Prima, Prima, Goloka Prima, Golokera Prima, Prima Dana, Goloka Prima, Golokera Prima Dana, Hari Nama, Sankirtana. Ratin Jan Nilo Kene Upai. That's a song by Naratam Das Thakur. Describing the appearance of the holy name emanating from the spiritual world. Hmm. Any other questions? Yes. Dennis. Maharaju. Uh, mentioned, uh, uh, you mentioned the reading of uh, 
our uh, scriptures um, always reveals new meaning. Um, so I was wondering how, how can someone like, I mean, come to an end like and get the name like um, our um, grandfather Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, how can get like the name Bhakti Siddhanta and Bhakti Vedanta mm -hmm. to know what's the essence of um, scriptures if there is always some new meaning revealing. So well, how can you conclude? Bhakti Siddhanta means the conclusion and Krishna also says the conclusion. That's mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Vedaisya chaham eva veda vaidyo vedanta krit veda vedeva chaham Krishna says, I am the compiler of the Vedas, I am the knower of the Vedas, and the Vedas are meant to know me. So Bhakti Vedanta means one who has both knowledge and devotion. And Bhakti Siddhanta means the conclusion of all, uh, all Bhakti. Mm -hmm. Or the highest form of Bhakti. But, mm, yeah, yeah, the essence is Krishna. When you come to that, then you have the essence. But then, then you begin another whole series of study. Once you understand everything is Krishna and everything comes from Krishna, and my, my duty is to serve Krishna, then you start to learn about Krishna. That's the next step. And there's where the knowledge goes unlimitedly. There's no, no limit to the knowledge of Krishna. And that's explained also, that uh, there's two things you can never exhaust. In other words, you can never come to the end of understanding Krishna's qualities. And you can never understand uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the essence of Radharani's love for Krishna. It's not possible. These two things you'll never understand, Radharani's love for Krishna and Krishna's qualities. They're not, nobody can understand. It's just not. Even Krishna can't understand Radharani's cool love. <laughs> he has to become Lord Chaitanya to find out. <laughs> uh, so it's so it's so unbelievably exalted that it cannot be explained. Well, they try to explain it to some degree, so we get a little idea. But then the qualities of Krishna, mm -hmm. Ananta, the, the multi-headed serpent sitting at the bottom of the universe, is who carries the universes on his hoods, is chanting the glories of the Lord mm -hmm. from time immemorial. And he never exhausts his glories. Unlimited, the Lord's glories are unlimited. We live in a world, a world of limitations, so it's hard for us to really even accept some of this stuff. <laughs> because everything we do has some limit to it. Can we say that this is the point? That there are, <coughs> that there is always some uh, spiritual nectar. Yeah. Can you say that? It is, it's constant. It's yeah, the spiritual nectar comes in different forms. Just hearing about Krishna as, as the creator is interesting in nectar. Krishna as the maintainer. Krishna as the destroyer. Krishna as the the beautiful boy of Vrindavan and all the pastimes that included within that. And so much unlimited nectar, yeah. The thing is, you can hear the same pastime over and over again, and you can also find more and more happiness from the same thing. <laughs> That's where you can't do that with material things. <laughs> hmm. From the from the audience, um, it says that Ganesh worship is to remove obstacles and become wealthy. But why doesn't Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu give the same advice like Srila Prabhupada, namely to worship the spiritual master instead of Ganesh? He just mentions it, but as 
He he just mentions that Ganesh removes obstacles. But then again, who does Ganesh worship? Who's the worshipable object of Ganesh? Who's his who's his is today? Huh? The Shringadev. So I heard Bhakti Charumarad say, we don't have to worship Ganesh, we can worship the Shringadev. <laughs> and that's what we do. <laughs> we worship the Shringadev <laughs> for removing of obstacles. But the spiritual master is also very powerful and he can also remove obstacles too. But people who don't worship, let them start with Ganesh. <laughs> At least they get an idea where to start. Here's that, that there's that story where one man wants to find out who's the greatest. So he goes to different people. And every time he meets one person who, is, who he thinks is the greatest, they tell him, well, actually, you know, I'm serving this other person. So it goes like from one person to another. Each person is saying, well, you think I'm great, but actually I'm, I'm, I'm serving this person. So he goes to that person, that person says, well, I'm serving. And finally comes back to Krishna. <laughs> The source of everybody's greatness, you know. So, yeah, we worship. We can worship Nishringadev, or you can also. But Rupa Goswami mentions it in Nectar Devotion, just because that's what Ganesh gets his power. From the Shringadev. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But we're, we're not instructed to worship Ganesh. We're instructed to honor Ganesh. But we don't give formal worship. As Krishna Prabhupada says in the purport of the last verse in the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, that the word Bhajate refers to worship of Krishna exclusively. Bhajate means to worship the Supreme Lord. The demigods are honorable, but we, we don't worship the demigods, we worship Krishna, who is the source of the demigods. But for ordinary people, they can worship Ganesh. Hmm. And they can benefit from that. And then if they worship properly, then Ganesh will bring them to the next level of worship. Hmm. Yes, Mandali Gosh, Mandra. Mandagosh. Oh. Oh. I just changed it. <laughs> <laughs> How is it now? Mandali. Gosh. Mandali. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can use either one. <laughs> Thank you. Don't tell your spirit. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, though. <laughs> uh, so, um, my question is connected to. Uh, demigod worship. So uh, we could uh, say that worshiping demigods is indirectly worshiping of the Lord. That yeah, right? that's what it, that's what Krishna says. He says that in the seventh chapter. Let's see, I can uh, find the verse. Let's see here. Endowed with such faith, one endeavors to worship a particular demigod and attains his desires. But and actually, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. <laughs> yeah, he's be he's he he empowers the demigods to, to you know accept worship. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the people who worship the demigods worship for material benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sisi Pancha Tadpa Ki Jai Gaur Pimanandi.